This is Sam in Billings, Montana. I'm a wood turner and an artist, and I promote and share wood turning through my weekly YouTube videos. I'm also a robust lathe dealer, so if you're interested in the finest American-made lathe, contact me and I'll answer any of your questions. So, thank you. All right, time for another Notes from the Turning Shop. January 2023. Well, time marches on, doesn't it? And let's uh, take a look at what I've been up to here. Um, on my notes, I've been having trouble keeping up with the comments, and I apologize for not getting back to everyone and getting back quickly. It's just a little bit uh, overwhelming. I just reached 67,000 subscribers. Now, <laughs> That sounds like I'm bragging, but really, um, not all those 67,000 subscribers watch my videos every week. Well, I appreciate the ones that do. And in this video, uh, if you are new to my notes from the turning shop video, I give something away every month. And in January, this month, I'm giving away this, this nice low profile wing bowl. Okay, there it is. And stay tuned and I'll, I'll cover the rules. All you need to do to enter is just leave a comment and you're entered, but more on that later. Anyway, um, I get a lot of comments and emails, different kinds of communications every day, and oh my gosh, anyway. Um, I, I try to hit the highlights in my notes video. I've got uh, six or seven pages of comments and I need to get to it. Okay, let's see what else we got going. This was um, a video. This is my Banksia seed pod uh, video. And that turned out pretty cool. Okay. Okay, I had to go get a flashlight. And let's take a look at my my Banksia seed pot bowl. Not sure how that's coming through, but it's pretty cool. I always like the results, but uh, yeah, not a big fan of turning this stuff. Anyway, um, let's take a look and see what else we got going here. I just did a couple videos on inserts. Okay, and one of the items I turn occasionally is a meat masher, meat tenderizer. And here it is right here. This you can also get on the Niles Bottle Stopper website, uh, Carl Jacobson. So there's the, the handle for that. I'm in the midst of turning that. When I did my insert video, I did a couple threaded inserts with hand chase threads. And here's one of them. And I thought, you know, I'm going to just put that right in the, the lid of a, a little box and make use of these inserts that I made. So there we go. And I got another one someplace around here. What else? Well, take a look at this. I made a football. I'm not going to tell you a lot about this. I can't. It's kind of a secret. But uh, yeah, I go out for a long one. Anyway, video upcoming in the next two or three weeks on this. Just subscribe and you'll get a notification. Yeah. What else we got here? Um, one of the comments I got was on this um, bowl I did a while back. And this is some of that uh, basket illusion. And one of the comments I got was, well, it's not really a basket illusion because all you did was, uh, you know, do the, the basket illusion on the rim. Well, okay. Anyway, there's something else. I, I'm not sure if I've shown this very much. Yeah. What else we got here? Well, let's, uh, here's a little Bradford Pear Natural Edge Bowl. I did a video on that. And right now, I got peanuts stuck in it. 
All right. Upcoming videos. Oh, you know, actually, I gotta backtrack a little bit. This video is not up yet on the Bradford Pear, so that's an upcoming video. Yeah. Another video I've got uh, coming up here on uh, January 29th, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm pretty positive. It's a sharpening video showing uh, how I use the Wolverine system. And I've got a little clip I'm going to show you right here. In an upcoming video, I'm going to cover the Wolverine sharpening system. I'm going to take a look at the platform, the V-arm, and the Vera grind. And I'm going to cover those extensively and do some sharpening. So look for that video coming up in a week or two. Uh, just a kind of a little teaser on that particular video. Okay, I'm to the point where I need to talk a little bit more about the giveaway. The notes from the turning shop giveaway. We'll put that little prize right there. Um, in December, John K. Hall won a little box of some of my exotic wood blanks. Okay. Thank you, John. Dave Morgan, um, I did a giveaway in which, and I can't remember which video, but anyway, Dave Morgan won uh, a set of Tom Ackley's uh, buffing paste and polishing compound. So congratulations, Dave, and Dave is an old friend of mine. He, he well deserves uh, such a gift. Uh, Tom Ackley and Annette. Okay, they're in this together and they do a fantastic job and provide a great product. Um, Tom's buffing or polishing compound was mentioned in This Old House magazine. And I don't have a good picture of that or I'd put that up, but wow, that's pretty cool. Tom, congratulations, you, you also well deserve that recognition. Um, I'll probably get back to some of this stuff here. Uh, one more thing about the, the notes giveaway. Okay, leave a comment and I'm going to put this video out and it's going to be out January 25th. Okay, January 25th. And I will wait five days and I will select a winner. I, I have a comment picker, just randomly select somebody and they will be the winner. Now, please help me out here. You got to go back and look at your comment, the one you left, okay? And I'll let you know there because that's the only place I can contact you. Uh, I'll let you know that you won and you'll send me an email and I'll get your address and all that kind of stuff. I will put the rules up in the description below. So wait five days, leave a comment and you're entered. Okay, let's get into the comments here. Finally. All right, who we got? Spindles Workshop. Uh, cool little project. Oh, may I ask what the yellow dot is on your gouge? Yeah, you know, I've got uh, my tools color-coded. And a, a yellow dot on my spindle gouges, well, it means they're a spindle gouge. And... Uh, Red is the bowl gouge and you know, if I have a student in my shop and I'm going to have a student in, in my shop on Wednesday, Barb is coming by from the local club here, um, it's easier for them to identify a tool. Is this a skew chisel? What is this? Well, they, they can look at the wall. I've got a little, a little diagram of uh, the color coding for my tools. Tom Coker. I often hear from Tom. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I really like the fact that the recess you did, this was on one of my cherry bowls maybe a month or so ago, maybe six weeks. I did an expansion recess and I guess I did a good job in concealing that expansion recess. So yeah, I do an expansion recess sometimes. Detorque 47. Uh, very helpful with all your detailed commentary. He mentioned water raising the grain, and that's a good thing to do sometimes, and you can get a, a little bit cleaner surface. 
Uh, he also goes on and says, will a conventional scraper give a smoother cut because the burr is more aggressive than a negative rake scraper? I think the, the, the heart of that question is, you know, is there a big difference between a negative rake scraper and a regular, you know, conventional scraper? I don't know if there is or not. I think the, the uh, conventional scraper can be a little bit more self-feeding, a little bit harder to control. I'm not sure if you get a better surface off that because it all comes down to the burr that you put on those tools. Good question though. Wish I had a really good answer. Scott Midori. Oh, he, he goes on and talks about scrapers also, some video I did. I see you move a lot slower than me with your scrapers. Well, you know, my wife occasionally comes out and turns, and one of her issues is she tries to move her tool too quickly. And she gets an uneven surface, and you know, uh, that may be the case um, with Scott. You know, go slow. Go really, really slow. If you can speed your lathe up and um, slow the traverse of your tool down a little bit more, you'll get a better surface. <clears throat> oh, here's, here is the, uh, the comment on the basket illusion. This is from Jay's Wood Turning. Uh, Jay writes, Sam, I love the fact that you shared being intimidated a little by trying the basket illusion, but I was willing to do it and try it. That's my dog you might hear down there. <clears throat> Now here's, you know, I'm not sure how many of these I'm going to do. I really respect Doug Schneider and everybody else who does these. And Doug does some enormous plates. You know, they're just really, really big. He does a lot of them. Um, I have arthritis. And this really got to my hand doing all that fine work with, you know, burners and pens. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I think the world is safe for me doing basket illusion pieces. Now this is from Charlie. Always look forward to your videos. I usually learn something new all the time. I am primarily a segmented turner. Anyway, I have no luck using scrapers. I have turned all of mine into negative rake scrapers and now I love them. Now, you know, I can understand that. I could understand also me using nothing but a negative rake scraper. They're awesome. Um, sometimes when I want to take off more wood more quickly, I'll use a conventional scraper and just kind of kind of get down to the surface I, I need to go to. But uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with negative rake scrapers. They're safe. They're good. They're they probably leave as good a finish as any tool, providing you have that burr on there. I don't have a name on this particular comment, but he, this person was wondering, when I sell something, how do I package it or wrap it, if presentable, to someone if it's a gift? You know, I don't do anything special if uh, someone sends a gift. A lot of times, uh, I'll put a little gift card in there, but that's about all. For, for me, when I ship something, it's all about the packaging and doing it safely. One thing I never do is I don't put bubble wrap next to one of my pieces. Because bubble wrap can have a kind of a chemical reaction and leave that imprint on your piece. I always wrap my pieces in paper, some brown paper first of all. And then I'll, I'll fill in with bubble wrap. Okay, I had to get tough with my dog and take her rawhide away. She just gets this and makes a lot of noise. Anyway, let's see where we're at here. Brent Sabotka. I know, Brent, how you doing? Um, always like the notes videos, Sam. Quick question. Are there any circumstances where you would benefit from a thicker parting tool? Okay, I've got like three sizes of parting tools, very thin and narrow. In fact, I've got some made out of uh, 
uh, a reciprocating saw blade. They're really, really thin. And that might be for something that's relatively narrow. Okay, I wouldn't try to part three inches off with something like that. <clears throat> and then I go to an eighth inch parting tool that I use ordinarily. Okay. And then maybe uh, a diamond parting tool. I don't really part off with a tool that thick, usually. All right, it's like, uh, but you know, a thicker parting tool, I would use it for detailing, making a bead or something, like a beading and parting tool. Kathy Moser, long time watcher. I know you are, I appreciate it. Uh, long time beginner. <laughs> Building up my nerve to try some some of your techniques. Well, you know, here's my response to that. Just just go for it. What's the worst can happen? Be safe. I don't want you to get hurt. But uh, if you've never turned um, a little natural edge piece like this, you know, um, they can be a little bit difficult. Maybe require a little bit more skill. But start with something small like this and use a wood that is uh, friendly to you don't make it hard on yourself like this bowl here this can be a little bit intimidating that's spinning around like a propeller this is ash you know you don't want to get your finger stuck in there but start with something small and don't be afraid a lot of times i get these comments from Potential thread chasers. Oh, I got thread chasers, but I just don't. Well, just do it. Work for Nike. Can I say that? Jay, and I'm going to butcher the name LeJoy. LeJoy. Oh, Jay. I've been using Mahoney's Walnut Oil for a while and recently picked up some tried and true Danish oil. Uh, he goes on to say, I prefer oils and without additives or petroleum thinners, Japan dryers. Well, I'm sorry, but it, you know, if you have a finish that dries, okay, it's gonna have something in there that helps it dry. A drying oil, you know, even a polymerized tongue oil has something in there that helps it dry. If you have pure tongue oil, that may take forever to dry or raw linseed oil that may take that a long time to dry <clears throat> some of those don't have a dryer in them but most of them do you know and I, I appreciate the sentiment that you want to use something more natural without a bunch of mm, dryers in there once the finish is cured it's going to be safe okay I mean that's you know I've been through that <laughs> A million times. Uh, Tom Coker, um, he left a nice long comment, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase some of this. He was talking about centering a glue block. And later on, pardon me, he said, you didn't address very well how you mount a glue block on a partially finished piece. And it might be a good video sometime, but I like the comment that he made further down. Um, he has a glue block, and this is a, a drive block, same thing. You can um, level this off and make a glue block out of it. But when you have a, a piece that's partially finished, let's just use this right here. How do, we, how do we center that glue block on this piece right here? Well, he drills a hole through the center of it. And this does have a, a hole, it's a little bit big, but if you draw, if you, if you drill an eighth inch hole through there and use the same drill bit, mark the center here, put the drill bit through there, you can line that up, and that's a good technique. Oh, he goes on to say, I hope you found a more friendly comment picker. All right. <clears throat> I think he's hinting that he wants to, to win the giveaway. Yeah. I will try my best, Tom. <laughs> um, the true cost of telling oil video. Uh, this is from Louis Powell. 
I have concluded that tongue oil is the best choice for my turning. Uh, recently I found that thinning with the solvent one to one allows it to penetrate in the wood better and seems to dry faster. Yes, now that's a great observation. And the same is true for well, maybe just about anything you use, even shellac and lacquer. But oil finishes, tongue oil, boiled linseed oil, if you want them to dry a little bit faster, add some thinner to them, okay, uh, mineral spirits or something, and they'll dry faster because you, the, uh, the solvent will evaporate quicker. And, and Louis goes on to say, for a food safe finish, I use pure tongue oil diluted with citrus solvent. Okay, and citrus solvent, you know, real citrus solvent, which has citrus oil in it, is a whole lot safer than other things we can be using. So thank you for that. Okay, who's next on the list here? Um, Rick Chapman. My frustration is around repairing a finish. I spend a week or two applying a general bowl finish and it gets scratches and he goes on. I think that would be a great video, okay? If, if I make something, whatever it might be, and you know, maybe the finish isn't up to par. And one thing I do, you know, I, I put all my, my Etsy pieces away in a tote and I come back and I go, oh my, there's a dull spot here. How do I fix that? Well. Um, Kind of depends somewhat on the finish you first apply. If it's something like, like a shellac, that's very easy to, to fix. Certainly gets more complicated. Here's, here's a bowl that uh, I was taking pictures of. This is kind of a Nick Agar piece. All right. Ash. Lovely bowl. Well, I've got that airbrushed right in there. And if I get a scratch or something happens to that finish, it's difficult to repair that. But yeah, that's a that's a tough one. Org Coast, it must be Oregon Coast somebody. Sam, I could not help but notice how much you use scrapers. I like to use them but have a devil of a time getting the burr correct. Do you have a preferred way to sharpen the scraper? Sometimes what you can do, um, is you can take the burr off to begin with because sometimes after you grind it and re-sharpen it that burr gets a little bit funky gets a little bit uh, I don't know just misshapen or something take it off and in my upcoming video on sharpening with the Wolverine sharpening system uh, I will cover that and that will be out in about a week or ten days Blending oil finishes, John Lanier. I've been using equal parts of boiled linseed oil, shellac, and denatured alcohol. I think they call that shine juice, I think, as a friction polish. Good stuff, I've got, I've got some of that and I use it. Um, I sand down to 1200 grit, gives the bowl a very nice finish. Oh, this is what I was gonna comment on. When, when I do a piece, um, I really like that tactile element. You know, I want that piece to be really, really smooth. Okay, if I pick up something, even this little, let me get rid of my peanuts. <laughs> if, if I pick up something like this little bowl, and it's really nice, it's <clears throat> really nice and smooth, I want that, that surface as smooth as I can get it, and that's a good, good thing to go for. And I think this is Johan Pemerup. Thank you for your videos. I enjoy them. How do you dispose of rags when you're done finishing? Now, this is weird, maybe. Um, if I'm wiping something off with denatured alcohol or lacquer thinner on a paper towel, over by my garbage can, I just throw them on the floor. Okay, and I wait for them to dry after a couple, three days. They're safe. If you crumple them up and throw them in a garbage can and they're still wet, that's when you can have a problem. So that's how I usually dispose of those kind of rags. David Walser, I think you misspoke. He's talking about me, okay. 
you said that none of the things you heated, I was heating wax and something, but he was saying basically, I misspoke when I, when I implied that wax wasn't flammable. Well, I guess it is, which makes no sense to me because you have candles and a flame and well, anyway, um, and I went did some research and wax is flammable at about 400 degrees. Well, and that's probably, uh, you get it on a hot plate, you could have uh, an issue there, so be careful. And uh, David is, is right for calling me on that. It can catch fire, we don't want a fire in our shop. Uh, this is the last comment, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this on an up note. This is from Lefty McShea. This is from Lefty McShay right there, a little thumbs up. And Lefty says, it ain't all bowls and boxes. That's right. Now, I'm not sure what he was talking about exactly, but um, he left a comment on a video and he said, it ain't all bowls and boxes. Very, very true. There's a lot of other things we can be turning. There we go. On to February, and then March and April, and maybe a little bit of sunshine here in Montana. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe, and I will talk to you next time. Thanks.